Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Monday the 31st of August. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Northampton. Thank you for joining us today in England. It's a bank holiday, uh, although you wouldn't necessarily know it either by the uh, weather or by, of course, all what's happening around us. But I trust that wherever you are, whatever you're going to be doing today, that you're well. May God bless you with an awareness of his presence with you today. In our readings over the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to be going through Paul's letter to the Philippians. And there's going to be some resources available for you, which we're going to be linking to both on Instagram, with our church Instagram account, which is linked to the Facebook page and on YouTube too, with our friends from the Bible Project and other resources too, to help you as you seek to uh, turn your prayer into living action and we want you to uh, be enriched and blessed by that and if we can help you any further way please do get in touch with us but first and foremost our intention is to pray and to be formed by that prayer in our relationship with the Lord so let's bow our heads and remember that the Lord is here and his spirit is with us Psalm 6 O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror, while you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who can give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror. They shall turn back and in a moment be put to shame. Thanks be to God for his words. Now let us all pray. O God our Father, King of heaven, Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, ascended Lord, Spirit of God, lighting upon us and filling our lives with love, we worship and adore you, for all honour and glory and power are yours by right. We praise you for all that makes our world blessed by your presence. We thank you for all that makes the unseen heaven a reality for us as we live here on earth and for all the means of your love and grace that are poured daily into our lives. Lord, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you are crucified, risen and ascended for us. We confess that we've not loved you as our Redeemer, nor served you as our Lord. We've not brought our prayers to you, nor heeded your tears shed over the world. Forgive us, we pray. Breathe into us a new spirit of service and make us joyfully obedient to your will. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we begin our readings in the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 1, and beginning at the first verse. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, 
because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Each day we're going to be sending out um, a verse for the day, starting today, and it's going to be something that's connected with our readings. And the verse for today, uh, today is Philippians 1.6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you br will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. This is a verse that's all about being formed, being made more like Jesus. Some people refer to this as spiritual formation. It's how we are changed by the activity of God's Holy Spirit, by the Word of God and the love of our Father, to become more like his son Jesus Christ. And Paul here is giving us a, a hint as to how he sees that happening. Firstly, God begins a good work. It's God who initiates. The story of our salvation begins with God. Secondly, the progress of that work is love, ever flowing more and more. Verse 9, this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more. You know, a sign that we're growing more like Jesus isn't that we know more about him, we know more facts, or that we're able to uh, interpret the Bible in a particular way, but it's love. Love for God and love for other people. Is that growing? Let me ask you today, is your love for God and your love for uh, human beings uh, growing or is it declining? Somebody once said to me that uh, the Christian life would be fine if it weren't for other Christians. Now, I kind of understand that sometimes some people can be like heavenly sandpaper. But, you know, we're not uh, called here just to put up with people. We're called to love them to love them as God in Christ has loved us, and to forgive others just as God in Christ has forgiven us. So God starts the work. He develops it through love, and he brings it to completion uh, as a result of his work. Because his love will help us to determine what is best. You know, every day we have choices in the way we live our lives. And the way in which we can make that choice is to think, does this action, does this thought, does this word, does this deed, does this plan, does it reflect something of the love I have for God and the love I have for other people? Or is it born out of another spirit? As individuals and as communities of believers, we are called to be people who are loved. In fact, the Lord Jesus said, by this shall you know that other people know that you are my disciples, by your love one for another. This is the concern of the gospel that Paul will speak about all the way through this lesson, that the go throughout this letter, that the gospel will advance through the lives that the Philippian Christians lead. His entire life, his heart, his mind, his will, he'll go on to say, has been formed by service of this gospel to which he was called. And for you and for me, we're called to share in that work as we live lives that are joyful, unselfish, humble and passionate for the gospel in everything living 
for the glory of Jesus, who has begun a good work in us and will bring it to completion. Let's confess our faith together. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege of living in a world filled with variety and beauty, for the gift of loving and being loved, for friendship and mutual understanding, for the richness of our world, for the delights of music and poetry, for other people's thoughts and conversations, for good books and reading, for the refreshing power of the falling rain, for the strength and vitality of the shining sun, and for everything that brings life into our lives. Lord, we give you thanks and lift up our hearts in praise. And above all, we thank you for the grace of your Spirit flowing into our lives and recreating them so that we may become more like our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive our thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the Cameroon. We pray for those in that country who are still blighted by the attacks of the Islamist militant organisation Boko Haram. We pray, Father, for those who've had to flee to the mountains and now finding their lives afflicted by various diseases, the lack of access to clean water, and those who suffer from malaria now. We pray, Father, for aid to reach those who are most in need and for the work of Christians that Jesus' love may commend and compel support and encouragement and the flow of aid to those who most need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the country of North Korea. We pray for foreign businesses who seek to invest in that country, even in difficult circumstances and even when whilst there is so much uh, restriction placed on their activities. We pray that as people invest financially in that country, that, Father, you would, you would bless those who seek to invest spiritually. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for ourselves and for those whom we love in a moment of quietness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Share together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you ascended as King of heaven and earth, and that you are in control of all things. Help us to trust you in joy and in sorrow, and to obey you always for the honour of your name. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, to remain with you and with those whom you love with God's people everywhere this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Trust you have a good bank holiday. Uh, a reminder to watch out for all the, the different means by which we can encourage you during these days and the extra resources that are available to help you engage with the letter of Paul to the Philippians. But until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>